It, well, it was uh, uh, really almost cultural shock. To, we went from a dark uh, hospital that was old into a bright new hospital that was brand new and uh, state of the art uh, at that time in 74. When I came in 1970, <clears throat> there was a big hole in the ground beside the uh, red brick building and we were gonna start construction any day now. And, uh, but anyway, when we moved in, it was uh, a blessing. The, the uh, intensive care was nice and big. The one we had was uh, adequate, but barely. The operating rooms were bigger and, and better lit and more of them. The uh, wards were really nice. I trained to be an internist inside the walls of Brackenridge Hospital. Um, lots of great memories from my three years there. I stayed on an extra year after my residency as the chief resident. I trained in the old building that's still sitting over there now. And um, it, it was an older building then. I started in 2003, it had been built in the 70s. Um, and yet there was a certain charm to the building. There was a certain, um, I don't know, family feel to the way the building was and many, many longtime staff. And so it was truly a, a privilege to get to learn how to be a physician inside that building. But I always knew when I got my nursing degree, I was going to work at Brackenridge Hospital. I had heard so much about Brackenridge Hospital and I also had clinicals there and I knew this is, this is the patient population I want to work with. I'm learning so much and I had never been around homeless patients. I had never been around people that, you know, came from other countries and, and, and were here under very um, unusual circumstances. So it really opened my eyes and helped me grow not only as a person but also as a professional. Brackenridge will also, also have a very special place in my heart because for the for the 12 years that I spent there, I also met my husband. And we now have two children, and those are memories of meeting him that I will never, ever forget. Um, and that day, they were super busy. Mm -hmm. I remember waiting in a waiting area. They wouldn't even give me a room because they were very, very busy. Right. Um, oh, I got the room. Mm -hmm. And the anesthesiologist, and in this, yes. he came in and he was ready. He gave me the epidural. That's right. And Dr. Gore had come in and checked my vitals. Every, I mean, every single thing, every single experience that we, uh, we had there, um, it was something unbelievable. At, at one point, I thought my daughter was, uh, we were going to lose her because of the heartbeat going down, and I was so concerned, so worried. But then again, every, uh, the nurses, they, they were like, I guess they've seen this before, and they were so calm, they were so positive, and they said, it's okay, everything is going to be okay. So everything was done right, properly, and at the right time, and, uh, you know, after that, he, this is what we have now, and so we're so proud. There were constant renovations of that building. Uh, if you walked into that building today and we walked down through the ICU, uh, you'd have to understand that ICU didn't exist when the building was originally built. It was added. A brand new ICU was built on the sixth floor of that building that wasn't there when it was initially built. So, it, and, and this was a hospital that nobody had ever thought about the fact that we would become technologically driven and computer dependent at some point in the future. And so there were challenges like, do you have enough outlets to plug in all the computers that everybody's rolling around? Um, lots and lots of work went into that building on an ongoing basis uh, to try to keep it up. Um, and, and it was remarkable the things that were able to be done to that building to keep it up. There was a limit to that. Well, our safety net and teaching hospital, Brackenridge Hospital, and now what is Dell Seton Medical Center at the University of Texas at Austin, uh, have historically and traditionally been iconic parts of the community. The beauty is that it served as the foundation for us to jump off of back in 2011 and 2012. Uh, back then, we uh, put forward to the community an idea or a vision of 10 goals in 10 years 
Uh, one of the goals was to get a medical school in, in Austin, Texas. But a key, key goal was that we needed to have a 21st century modern teaching and safety net hospital. And of course, Brackenridge became Dell Seton, just directly across 15th Street. You know, Brackenridge has been a very important facility to this community for over 130 years. And it symbolizes something, and that is care delivery, trauma center, and also caring for the poor and the vulnerable in this community. And while that building may go away, the mission and spirit of what we're about and the community providers between Central Health, Ascension Seton, and the Dell Medical School remains the same. It, it's, it's a building, but it's going to continue to provide services to those who need it the most. And that's our mission. So the building will be gone, but the funds that it's going to be able to raise will provide services to those who need it the most. Brackenridge has been part of healthcare in Travis County for many generations, and it will continue to be part of healthcare in Travis County for many more generations to come. People associate Brackenridge with this is where the old hospital used to be. But now, with the new development, we're going to have a new way to be able to help fund our mission to provide health care for people here in Travis County. I'm here today to say thank you to the doctors and the nurses, the EMT, everybody who helped save my life. Cooperation with the city and our neighbors, we will begin deconstruction and demolition of the tower and other buildings here on this campus. And over the next several months, maybe a little longer, we'll start to give new shape to this place that carries on the same hope and the same mission.